Panelist Podcast. Kyle here with Pierre and a very, very special guest who I will have introduce themselves for clipping purposes. I'm Tyrell Cannon, artist of the upcoming image comic, The Schlub. All right, Pierre, start us off. Uh, let's get right into it. Tyrell, tell us about your career in comics. Well, I've been making comics for a long, long time, but I didn't do it full time until about four years ago. So before that, I was a lot of self-published, small press stuff. And I had a day job. I worked at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago and I would make my comics sort of on the side. And then about four years ago, after a lot of stressful consideration for a very risk averse person, which I am, I made the plunge, lots of encouragement from my family and friends. And since then, I've had the good fortune of working with some really awesome people. I've done some great books. I did a book with Seth Jacob called Astrobiology. And then I did a couple volumes of Beef Bros with Aubrey Sitterson. And I've done a couple issues of my comic, Eris, which is a science fiction comic that I do with my younger brother, Logan. And now I'm working on The Schlub with Kenny Porter and Ryan Stegman with Art by Me and Colors by Mike Spicer, or Letters by John Jetty Hill. And it's my first Image comic. So it feels pretty exciting for me being a kid of the 90s who grew up with Image. So that's sort of my career so far. As far as the books I've made, it's been the gamut. I've done everything from true crime to autobio to sci-fi to action to comedy. So I try to do lots of different kinds of books. I did see Eris on your website and it definitely piqued my interest. Definitely a cool career. Could you describe like your daily routine to us now that it's all comics? Yeah, well, I have two kinds of days. There's the kind of day where I get to work most of the day and then there's the kind of days I watch my daughter. So I have a three-year-old daughter. A couple days a week, we keep her home and my wife and I split time with her. My wife is a jeweler. It's actually her bench right over there. And so we split time with her on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I wake up without an alarm, which has been great ever since quitting my job. But since I have a kid, I can't really sleep in too much. I'm usually up by seven or 7.30 at the latest. We get her dropped off by 9.30 and then I'm back here and I work till about noon. And then I take a walk with my dog, get my body moving a little bit and then come back and work until about five at the drawing table or sometimes with an iPad and other areas of the house or I'll go sit at a coffee shop sometimes if I'm doing some thumbnails and then cook dinner family time and then usually back to the drawing table for a couple hours after bedtime for my daughter. That's typically my week of Monday through Friday and then I'll work occasionally on Saturdays if I have to. I'm trying to get better about taking the weekends off. How good did it feel to quit like a day job? I was just going to say that. It's tough. I took a long time to make that decision. In my earlier life, a very risk averse person and a very kind of worried person. And so I did a lot of planning ahead of time. But when I finally did it, it felt really strange and jarring. I mean, I'd worked at the school for over 10, 12 years at that point with the same people. And I really cared about my job. I liked my job a lot. And I I really liked my boss and I liked my employees. It was really great. So I kind of immediately felt great that I was just making art all day and I felt really free. And then within six months, we got pregnant. And so I was in panic mode again. I'm like, oh my gosh, how's this going to work? You know? And somehow we got through it and here we are. But it's weird because I look back even just four years in now and I can't imagine doing what I did before. My goal really at this point is to not have to go back ever. But even just thinking about that specific job, even though I liked it and and had it for so long, it seems like a completely different life. And I guess that's how it feels now. And it felt good. And and I had a lot of support because it was an art school. And a lot of people there are artists. They were all cheering for me as I walked out the door. So that was really nice too. I mean, it feels great, but you're kind of living on the razor's edge at all times when you're a freelance artist. So that part's a little weird, but I'm getting used to it. Where are you based out of? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, I'm in Chicago. I've lived in Chicago for a long time, probably longer than any other place in my life. I've lived other places and I have family in Colorado now, which is where I spent some of my childhood. But I'm in Albany Park, Chicago. So it's a great city, great neighborhood. Really love it. It's awesome. Comic book recommendations. I guess what have you been getting into lately? Whether it's comic books, I don't know. We're big fans of anime. So if there's anything else that you're into. Well, I'm fans of those things too. I'm weird though. I'm not great at a lot of current stuff right now. Comics wise, I feel like once I started making comics, I've had less time to read them. The most current things that I've been reading, I just finished up the Tradmore Doctor Strange, really enjoyed that. And I read everything my friend Danny Warren Johnson does. So I just finished up Do a Power Bomb, and that was really great. And then I read stuff some of my friends and collaborators do like Ryan Segman, he does Vanish. So I checked that out. And Kenny's writing DC Mech, Superboy and The Flash. And he's done a couple things with another friend of ours, Jason Howard on The Flash. And that's really great. I'm really excited for my friend MS Harkness has a book. I've already read it, but it's not out yet. There's a book coming out from Fanographics called Time Under Tension. And I highly recommend checking that out. That's a really solid book too. I can't wait for the printing to be done on that. And then anime, I'm kind of an old school anime guy. So I watch a lot of old stuff. So I just rewatched Redline the other day. That's one of my favorite animations. It's kind of a car racing 
amazing movie, really incredible two-dimensional animation. But I am excited for the new season of Baki. I do like Grappler Baki quite a bit. So yeah, that's the things I'm reading and watching. What about y'all? I guess the only thing I've been really watching is that new Superman show came out, My Adventure oh, cool. Superman. It was actually because Kenny posted it. I had no interest in watching it at all. Kenny posted that it was a great show. So I was like, ah, screw it. Let me put it on. I know you mentioned DC Mech and Superboy and Vanish. All three books, highly recommend. Definitely on my pull list. I think all three were sick. And I guess we're going to have to check out your friend's book when it comes out as well. Yeah, please. I try and read a comic a night to make myself feel better about everything else that I absorb all day. I read Poison Ivy. I think I'm up to date with that. That's been really good. Vanish, obviously, we're subscribers to KLC. And yeah, watching wise, I've honestly been rewatching The Sopranos with my wife. She never saw it. So I don't know how that's happened. I feel like a lot of people have become new fans of it. Two people I know literally said it to me. I'm like, that's crazy. I just started it like out of nowhere. Something brought it back. I don't know what. I'm going to bring back the velour jumpsuit soon, though. Just <laughs> walk around. Forget about it. He was eating a cupcake or something in bed. And my wife is like, that's you. Living your life. I like it. Let's go to the schlub. You let us read it early. It was fantastic. Big fans of Ryan Stegman. Big fans of Kenny Porter and everyone else. And now big fans of you. Thank you. Why don't you give us the synopsis? Tell us all the good stuff, the dates, everything we need to know. Right. Yeah. So the schlub written by Ryan Segman, Kenny Porter. It's about a dentist who is not a great person, makes a lot of bad decisions, kind of blames the whole world for his problems, named Roger. And through some happenstance, he ends up switching bodies with the world's greatest superhero, who is named Cirrus, who is, you know, an all-powerful Superman type. And then the story sort of tracks how that affects their lives and their relationships and how it affects the whole world that depends on Cirrus to save the day. So it's definitely a body swap comic. I mean, we swap their bodies pretty early on. and But then after that, there's a whole lot of really cool character development. Comic itself has a lot of humor, but it also has lots of action. There's sad parts and fun parts and huge fights, massive fights. I've been drawing so many cities and so much rubble and so many insane action scenes. My wrist hurts. It's been really fun. And I think it's a perfect kind of book for people who like comics, but I also think people who maybe haven't read a lot of comics in the past might dig it because it, it turns the superhero thing on the side a little bit and kind of gives it a different sort of take. I've never really seen a lot of body swap superhero books before, and I love the genre. Ryan talks about it a lot, how much he loves body swap movies. Big fan of them as well. But yeah, it comes out August 23rd. The final order cutoff is July 31st, and I highly recommend everybody pick it up and put it on your poll. We're having a blast. It's really fun. A really fun book to work on. We really enjoyed it. I was very excited to see Ryan writing. He's really good at that. Always been a favorite artist of mine. When we did interview him, I was more nervous than my wedding day. It is really cool to see him writing just because I've watched his career for like over 10 years now. But with that being said, I do want to talk about the elephant in the room or even the schlub in the room here. I have met Ryan probably a dozen times. I have photographs of him. We've interviewed Kenny Porter, I think three times. One of them, which I will brag, he asked us. But <laughs> as far as Roger goes, I'm the same height. I have the same build. I have the same color hair. I have the same hair hairline. I don't have as good of teeth. And obviously my mustache isn't as pretty. I'm a little curious if there's text messages going back and forth. That would sure be a funny origin story for the character. I think that when we were designing the characters, Ryan had already pitched this with himself drawn it years and years ago. Honestly, the only character he had anything really down for me to look at, honestly, it was like one little sketch of Roger that he showed me of like his face. And I changed it a little bit from there. So, you know, if he did that from that little sketch, then that would be on Ryan. But all I had to go on was that and then the character description. But I wanted him to feel like somebody that I know, a regular person. I think that one of the things that we try to do and that I try to do with my art is to have that sort of like less super heroic type of person person and type of body in the book and other parts too, you know, like there's other characters that show up in the book that are not super powered and then make the super powered people like, you know, eight feet tall and 700 pounds and really big and kind of play that up. So I'm glad actually that you think that he looks like you or that you feel some relationship with him. I'm just looking for royalties. That's all. Well, if we get there, maybe we can throw you a couple bucks or something. <laughs> Kyle's been sending me a lot of things that you're going to see in the promotion. I like your outfit. I mean, it's very fitting. You do look like our Roger there early on in the book. He's all in his dentist gear. That's the sort of standard outfit is the coat, the tie, the glasses. So I am sweating right now. He does take his coat off at some point. So you're allowed, you know. I purposely got sizes too small just to really emphasize <laughs> my curves, we'll say. Well, I love it. Very nice to see our first cosplayer. It's wonderful. So question for you, I guess, going deeper into your character designs and everything. When I look at your designs, they're so different from other comic books in terms of your art and whatnot. Even going to a cover of Beef Bros. I definitely want to dive into that and where that all comes from. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, character design is one of the most fun parts of the job. And if you have the time to do some design sheets, it's really great if you can. Sometimes you have to design things on the page because of deadlines or whatever, or maybe a character's not in it very much. 
And so there's a lot of that we've had to do. But with the main characters, Ryan and Kenny got me rolling quite a while ago and gave me a lot of runway before we got into the book. So at least our main characters felt really familiar. And I had a lot of touch points that I use for the book, a lot of artists I look at and a lot of different things. I look at a lot of anime I and mean, I looked at Redline a lot, actually. I look at artists that I like, like Michael Golden and Jason Pearson and Jim Lee, and try to go back to some of the comics that really were a big influence on me early on in my life, and then find out what it was that I liked about it and try to take those pieces. And then the other part of it is to bring in stuff that maybe is not related to comics at all, based on whatever the characters are about. So Cirrus has sort of this influence of kind of Norse mythology and Greek gods and those kind of things. So I looked at a lot of classic sculptures of Greek gods and I looked at a lot of Asgard and especially a lot of the Kirby interpretations of that, but even the stuff outside of the comic representations of Norse mythology and just tried to incorporate some of that stuff into his design. It's kind of subtle because we still wanted him to read as a superhero. But one aspect is he has an asymmetrical sort of design on his outfit, which, you know, for me was sort of related to Greek. And then we also gave him little kind of armor elements like on his bracelets and his shoulder and things that sort of evoked maybe an older time style of warrior. And then in other cases, like with Worm, I got a character description, which I can't really tell you everything it says. It has spoilers. But when I got the character description, that one just came out like right away. You know, I got the character right away. I was like, I get this guy. I know what this guy should look like. So when I did Worm, that was like one pass. And then when I did Cirrus, there was a lot of workshopping between all of us. So I would do sketch after sketch. And I was the only one doing any drawing, but Ryan and Kenny and some of our other friends that are in our group of artists that talk pretty often gave a whole lot of feedback that helped out a lot. So, you know, Jason Howard and Riley Rosmo and Danny Warren Johnson and all those guys were sort of looking at it while we were developing it and giving us some really great feedback. And Cirrus took a really long time to get right, a couple of weeks of just kind of iterations to get him right. And then Roger, when I first started him, I wanted him to feel extremely realistic. He wasn't quite as short and quite as rotund as he is now. Someday I'll have to show the picture. What I was trying to do was just make a bigger loser version of Ryan. So I was trying to draw Ryan, but like as a schlub. And I think it was a little too safe. And so Ryan really pushed. He said, no, no, no. And he showed me this little sketch he did of the face. And he said, really big, you know, really go, you know, really goofy and really big. And Roger came together pretty quick after that. And then the other character that got designed pretty early on was Roger's ex-wife, Sarah. And that was another tricky one because I wanted her to feel like a real person, not a superheroine that has, you know, huge curves and all that. I wanted her to feel like a normal person. And so that was kind of challenging because you don't have as many tricks with a regular person. They have to be able to emote but look normal and they have to wear normal clothes and change outfits. Whereas when you design someone like Cirrus, he's going to be in his outfit most of the time. And so that's a really easy signifier. Another character being a main character that's a regular type person, the tricky part is finding how to cartoon them and how to make them look right. And I would say I, I locked in a kind of a basic design for her early on, but she's one of the ones that I feel like has changed a little bit as the series has gone on and I've really found her throughout the process of telling the story. So yeah, that's a little bit about the character design process on those. And then all the other characters, there's tons of characters. Kenny and Ryan are not short of ideas. So there's so many characters that pop up in every issue that are of varying degrees of importance. And all of those I kind of designed before I would start a page. Maybe I would have a few minutes to do something with them. You know, there's a guy who shows up in an issue named Sergeant Skyhawk, and I just kind of had to make him work on the day on the page. Some other folks that show up in issue two that I just designed on the page. So it's a mix of everything. It's been a really fun project because I've had a lot of leeway. And when I need to have more time, like I did with Cirrus, I can get it. But when I need to just do something on the page, the guys are pretty open to my interpretations. So it's been really nice. It's hard to make a new superhero costume that like sticks. It's super unique, but still hits certain classic tones. Like I was impressed with the design for him for sure. Well, thank you. That's what we were going for. And I wanted it to feel like a classic superhero outfit. I think a lot of the new stuff relies a lot on things like seams and pockets and buckles. And I like all that stuff, but I kind of wanted something that was a little more evocative of a Superman, a Thor, an X-Men mm -hmm. from days past. I think that we wanted him to read as more of the classic superhero. So how did you end up on this project per se? I guess give us a little behind the scenes of like the phone call. Yeah, it's kind of funny because I've been doing the comics a long time and I feel like I know a lot of people and I've tried every which way to get into this industry. But the truth of the matter for me was that it was a couple of different things. One of them was just doing it full time, like making that decision made a huge difference in what was offered to me. Instead of trying to meet the most important person in the room every time I'd go to a show or the editor I'm supposed to know, 
I just started hanging out with the people that I felt comfortable with. I got to the point where I'd had enough work for higher gigs that I knew that I didn't like working for people just for money, like if I could avoid it. And I preferred working with my friends whenever I could. And I've known Danny Warren Johnson since 2012. We met each other at a Wizard World here in Chicago and found out we lived in the same neighborhood and became really good friends over the years. I'd consider him one of my best friends here in Chicago. And we hang out a lot. As his career sort of you know, took off, which has been really exciting, he got to know a lot of people in the comics community and become friends with folks. And so he's part of a little critique group that he would tell me about sometimes that included Ryan Stegman and Riley Rosmo and Brian Level and a bunch of other guys. But once I was doing my stuff full time, they asked if I wanted to come on and hang out and show my work and get critiques. And everyone in that group has been so helpful to me in, in improving and feedback. And, you know, I talked to them regularly enough that I just started to know Ryan and Kenny really well. And Kenny and I had done a pitch actually a few years ago, it didn't get picked up. It was actually a robot book right before he did DZ Mech, me and him pitched a robot book. So Ryan, you know, it's funny because when I got in the group, I honestly didn't really know who Ryan was. I didn't read a lot of big two books. And I remember one day Dan was like, oh, I started hanging out with Ryan Stegman. I was like, who's that? And then once I got to know him, I was like, oh my gosh, this guy's like a really big deal. He's been on Spider-Man and Venom and all these things. And I loved his art. The more I saw his art, I was like, oh my gosh, this guy's great. And I learned tons of things just by looking at his work. And so at some point I was working on Beef Bros and I think he said something to me, just like to the effect of like, what are you doing after this? And I said, I don't know. I hope I get a job, you know? And so sometime after that, he's like, hey, so do you want to draw my book? And Kenny's writing it with me. And I said, yes. And he's like, don't you even want to know like what it's about? I said, well, sure, but like you guys are great and I want to work with you. So yes, I will absolutely do it. And then he told me the pitch and I was like, well, 100%, I'm on board. This sounds super fantastic. So that's sort of where it all came together. It was sort of meeting people, becoming friends through doing the same kind of work. And then Ryan, I think, saw something in my work that he thought it would fit the schlub really well. You know, I think he saw, especially what I did on Beef Bros, how I had a lot of action, but a lot of expressive characters and there's a little bit of humor in there. But then he saw that I also had some stuff that was a little more dark or emotional in my back catalog. So he asked me to draw it and I was honored and it's been a blast ever since. That's the genesis of me getting involved in the project. Yeah, your art fits perfectly. I will say that I couldn't imagine any other style like it fits the story so perfectly. Thank you so much. I kept saying that I was going to lie to everybody and say that Ryan came to me in a panic and said, I can't draw this. I'm not good enough. I mean, <laughs> But I decided to dump that story. <laughs> so my next question was actually going to be, what's it like working with Kenny and Ryan? But I feel like you answered that. And I kind of see that because we've interviewed Kenny, artists that have worked with Kenny. And it seems like Kenny does have a ton of knowledge and he throws a lot of characters at you. What he creates is crazy. And then same thing with Ryan in Vanish. He had a ton of characters, just so much to each one of their characters. So now right. I'm looking at your art, your story. From what you're telling us, there's so much coming uh, and there's so much already in the first issue. Absolutely. Would you say it's easier working with them being that one of the writers is already an artist. Yeah. And I think because he's an artist, I think what he brings to the collaboration is a lot of trust, you know, and a lot of freedom. I think that he appreciates when he gets those things when he works with a writer. And so he's been very gracious. They both have about giving me opportunities to have creative input into the book. You know, we work in sort of a Marvel style. So I get to do page layouts without specific panels always called out, you know, and then they go back and kind of adjust the script to that. So it's been really fun. You know, I, I was a little worried working with another artist. I thought maybe he would try to like micromanage it or tell me how to draw things. But it's been the opposite. He's very open to everything that I bring to the table. And so it's been really great working with him. And Kenny and I really jive. And, and Kenny's the kind of writer that totally gets it. He understands that comics is best when it's collaborative and best when there is an interplay between the images and the words. And he's also very open to taking ideas and then sort of magically making them way better through his filter. And so it's been really fun. You know, I remember one specific thing, there's something that pops up in issue two. And, you know, they had written it down as this happens and this happens with these characters. And I kind of was like, well, it was a really simple thing. I was like, instead of there being two of these guys, can there be three of these guys? And he said, yeah, sure. And I said, cool, well, I'm going to make them all look a little different from each other. Is that cool? Yeah, sure. And then, of course, I do that. And then Kenny turns them into full-fledged characters. It's really fun. They're both really fun to work with. Learning more about your art, looking into your portfolio and seeing Beef Bros and things that you worked on in the past, I can see that this book, they really allowed you to just do your art. Like this is very much your art. It shines really well with everything, with the collaboration between everyone. I'm glad that shows up. We want to make the kind of comics we want to read and we like making them with each other. So I'm really glad that comes across. You know, we have a lot of enthusiasm and it is the most fun thing that we get to work on, I think. You know, I mean, Ryan's very busy and Kenny's very busy 
because every time I send the pages, I want them to get stoked about it, you know, and be really excited to do the next issue. Is Kenny full time comic books yet? Are we still campaigning? He's still moonlighting, but you know, he's almost too good at writing comics. I think he might get dragged out of his day job eventually. We'll see. We're campaigning for it. Get Kenny out of his day job. <laughs> yeah, Kenny should quit. Yeah, that's great. One page specifically I kind of want to talk about without spoiling it too much, but it was like a building landscape. Each floor was basically a panel. That was brilliant. But generally, I mean, if you could tell us a little about that page and then just is there anything different you did with your style with this book that you kind of like really are experimenting with? Right. Those are great questions, man. That's the kind of stuff I love to talk about. So the page you're thinking about, I believe in the script, it said something like serious and worm battle through the floors of the building or something like that. And so I'm a big fan of anytime I can take an aspect of the medium and integrate it into some object or something that's happening, whether that be motion or a structure like a building. I really like to do that. An artist that I look at a lot is Frank Quietly, and he does a lot of stuff like that, where a panel will have depth to it, and it will look like a cube, or people will walk from one panel to another panel via a stairwell that's cut off by the panel border, which is just the floor. And I did a little bit of stuff like that on Beef Bros. I really love tricks like that. I think they're really fun, and I think that it just allows you to fill out this world of where the action is happening, so you get to see what's in each one of these floors that they're fighting through. And with superheroes, the action is so big that I think it's nice on the flip side of that to have little things that are more real world mixed in there. And I like to put a lot of Easter eggs in there and stuff. So I was like, well, what if he just throws them through the floors and just boom, 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 boom. And you see all the effects that it's having on these storefronts that are within these because it's in a dentist office where they start. So the trick with that one was not only getting just the concept down, but then finding a way to have the action track through the page still from top to bottom and left to right and leave some room for the words. And so I'm really happy with how that one turned out. I'm glad that you noticed it. As far as like things I'm doing with my art in this one, I try to give myself a challenge, you know, every issue or sometimes every few issues to up my game in some way. And I talk to a group of other artists and people that give me lots of great feedback. And so it's really nice to kind of try things and see how they work. And so one big area that I've been pushing myself beyond just doing action, which is kind of my overall goal right now in my career, is to use more spotted blacks. And so as the series goes on, you're probably going to see a lot more use of black and shadow and things like that that I maybe hadn't done as much in my past work. I tended to gravitate towards more of a clean line style. And the other thing that the book, I think, needs, so it was a challenge for me to do, so I'm trying to focus on, is just the expressiveness of the characters. I wanted them to be able to emote joy and pain and disgust and humor and really push the exaggeration of those emotions so that it comes across in a palpable way for people reading the book. So those are some of the big challenges. And then there is a lot of battles and stuff and cityscapes. And that's something that in my past work, I've sort of shied away from because I do a lot of sci-fi stuff. And so when I do buildings, they're usually very sci-fi-y. And in this one, it had to feel a little more kind of, we don't define the time exactly, but a little more like modern day and, and a little more like a real city. So drawn cars is another one that I'm working on. But but yeah, stylistically, just trying to find that mix between like these huge bigger than life characters and these everyday people. All very cool. You mentioned Easter eggs and I love Easter eggs. So that's like my big thing. I don't find them. I never find them. I have to always Google it afterwards. I'm like, oh, I missed that. So the art, everything just flows so well together that I just follow along the whole story. Like I'm just going along for the ride. So things like that, I completely miss, but it's so smooth. So it's a testament to kind of how you do it. It works. But I guess any Easter eggs that you may have thrown in that we don't know. Sometimes it's little dumb things and other times it's more major things. I feel like all artists do that. You're sitting there and you end up drawing your friends or yourself because it's an easy reference to grab. Like if you look at Dan's work, he's got almost everybody he knows in the backgrounds of those books. And actually him and Donnie did a book together, Ghost Fleet. They're both in that book as well. Donnie and Dan are in that book as well. Dan drew them in there. In this one, in the first issue, I can say that there's a version of me in there and my kid. There might be another friend that I've mentioned their name in there hidden somewhere. Beyond that, what I like to do other than like specific references to people is like if you go through Beef Bros, and these are things that I like to do because I, I want people to look at the work more than once and go through it and find things. Like in Beef Bros, there's kind of a rat that shows up all throughout it and no one's really noticed it yet. This little rat's all over the comic. He's in there all over the place. And so I got little things like that in the schlub as well. Characters, you know, you might see them in the background or some little object that has a funny thing on it. There's a bunch of fake food names that I steal a lot of my friends' names and use those for the food names. So there is some stegos in one of the issues and some porter puffs and things like that. That's really cool. Did not catch any of that. You were mentioning before your sci-fi cityscapes and we got like a little glimpse of Max Terror 
Terra, Cyrus's home realm. If it's not spoiler, or maybe you could just hint, will we see more of that? Because especially after now being a little more familiar with your art, I was like, I want to see what he does with that. I've heard a few people ask about Max Terra. I will say it doesn't spoil anything, but we do see more of Max Terra. And it has pushed me to really try to do some things. And I'm looking forward to drawing more of it. I'm pretty far along in the issues now. So some things have come and gone and other things are new. But the Max Terra, I think, will be hopefully something that pops up more and more since it's Sirius's home world. How many issues is going to be? Well, the first arc is what we're sort of focusing on right now. And that ends with issue six, which is what I'm working on right now. So it'll be done probably when the first issue's out. I'll be pretty close to getting that wrapped up. You know, we leave it pretty open after that. So a lot of it's just we're going to see how the book lands. And we really hope that it does well because we have a lot more story to tell and a lot more things to show. You know, it's nice to have arcs. So there's these natural points of sort of pausing mm-hmm. or stopping if you need to or if you have to. But yeah, we would like to keep going after six. But right now we're just trying to get that first arc really solid. That'll feel good. You know, it's like a good journey to have gone on with those characters. And then if we have the opportunity, I think that me and the guys want to keep doing this for a while. Sounds good. Yeah, that'd be cool. I feel like Max Terra has definitely got to be your like bread and butter, though. That's where you live, like the spacey vibe. I like that stuff. I can't really say too much, but there's some other places we see that are even more my vibe. So Max Terra, for sure. I love drawing sci-fi cities and stuff and not even just the city aspect of it. But I like kind of digging into the culture of these places if I can, you know, if we get more time there, you know, add some background characters and things like that. But there is some other areas we go to that are very much my jam that I cannot wait for people to see you mentioned this little rat and beef bros i feel like you should make like a little like small story of just this rat spinoffs yeah like a spinoff of your easter egg it would be good funny you mentioned that i have a collaboration with my friend landis landis blair that features a rat and a pigeon and we have not done it yet because we've both been so busy but that might be the place the rat makes his final appearance that would be really cool i love a good spinoff all right so i guess this brings us into our fun question segment <laughs> fun question time would you rather be one of the world's greatest superheroes the universe's darkest sorcerers or a dentist i feel like i should have said that in like a movie voice but anyways i don't know that's tough i definitely don't want to be a dentist i don't hate them as much as ryan does i have no real beef with uh, dentists in general but I, I don't think that i want to stare into people's mouths all day a sorcerer could be cool because that's a little more my vibe i'm kind of a doom metal horror movie kind of guy so The superhero thing would be a lot of responsibility, and I feel like I'd mess it up kind of the way Roger is. So I might take the sorcerer option. If there could be some flexibility on the evil, then I'd probably go that route. Okay. I'm offended because I'm dressed like a dentist, but okay. (laughs) So you would go dentist, obviously. That would be your answer. No, I would want to be the superhero just for height. I don't care about anything else. Let's go over some covers. So here we have number one, cover A, your cover. It is fantastic. Thank you. It's funny because I probably did that issue one cover. I think I had already drawn the first two issues. So I was a little more familiar with the characters, which was really fun. And I wanted it to sort of evoke that Hulk cover from back in the day, but with a little bit of a twist on it. That's me here. I'm scared. <laughs> and uh, that's the height difference between me and Pierre. It's perfect. <laughs> like, I don't know how many times I can compliment you on that, but the detail in your work is just nuts. Like, there's so many little things. I think you said earlier, even the, like the rubble. Like, look at the detail in the rubble. Like, you could have just drew a circle pretty much. And no, it's the most detailed rubble ever. It's fantastic, really. Yeah, I've got a sickness. Looking at this cover, I'm amazed. I'm hooked. I want more. This cover's great. Thank you. Ryan's cover. It's cool. All right. I like it. It's you. (laughs) Definitely you. He did his even later than mine, I think. So we had a few issues under our belt. And I was excited to see Ryan draw the characters because, you know, I kind of designed them, but they're his characters. And he's such a great artist. I was very excited to see him draw the characters. So every time he turns in a cover, I'm so excited. And he draws Roger a little different from me, but I like his take on him. I like that the mustache is a little bit more fuzzy. Roger doesn't read quite as short, I think, when Ryan draws him. I think Ryan makes him look pretty heroic. So yeah, it's a cool cover though. It's got that Stegman up shot. Stegman always does those low angle shots, which he's so good at. The Ashcan version, which I don't know how people obtained it. This is cool that there's an Ashcan out there. This is probably holding some pretty nice value, I'm sure. It went to retailers, so we were surprised to see them in people's hands as well. So I think some people got friendly with their retailers and and got their copies. I've got a handful and they're going to be available on my website, signed and everything once the book is out. So when issue one launches, I'll have some Ashcans available. I was stoked we did it. Black and white. I mean, Mike colors are amazing but it's always cool to see a, a black and white version of yeah definitely i will definitely be trying to get that and pierre yes i'll 
try and get one for you because I know you'll forget. All right, and then we'll look at number two, showing off the villain here. The colors on this too. I haven't seen this until just now. This is so thick. I'm very happy with this cover. The first people have talked to me about the issue two cover. It really feels like I unlocked a new level for myself. And I don't like to toot my own horn, but I just feel like this was a little milestone cover for me. When I did it, I felt like, okay, I see something new here. And then Mike colored it. I mean, just perfect. I've told people, I'm like, if you're not sure you want to subscribe to the series, look at the cover for issue two. And if you still don't want to do it, you don't like comics. The team really nailed it on this one. Yeah, I do think this one's my favorite. The villain is cool. Or is he the villain? And then we have Stegman's number two. This is a different take on Roger. He's very (laughs) tiny. This is a reference to an actual scene in the book, and I was excited to see Ryan do it. And actually, the thing I love the most about this one is Mike's colors for it. He went with this sort of television glow, and then that beautiful magenta half circle behind him. I think it's a brilliant little color job he did on that. Yeah, it's great. I even love the font of the schlub. Like, I think it just sticks. John J. Hill is our designer and letterer. He does all the book layout stuff for us and letters. And he does a great job. I had done some sketches of my ideas for the logo, and then he did a bunch of iterations, and then we ended up with this, and I'm really happy with it. Hill does a lot of great stuff. And then we have some character designs. The initial pass on Roger, you can see I kind of exaggerated him a little more and more as time went on. And then uh, it's funny because then Sarah, to me, got a little more normal looking as time went on. But Roger, I wanted to get him in the outfits there and see what he looked like. Those are fun. Here's another little factoid for you guys that I haven't really told anybody else. I designed all the characters completely nude first, and then I put the clothes on them kind of like dolls. I know what every character looks like naked. Okay. You don't want to know more than that. It's something I do this kind of weird, but that's what I do. Is that like your own thing? I don't know. I feel like especially if you're working on like a superhero doing action, at some point their clothes will get ripped or something. So it's kind of interesting to think about, you know, if they have birthmarks or skin things or hair or no hair or whatever it is. So do you give them birthmarks? <laughs> yeah, a couple of them do. This is funny because at the bottom, you can see some versions of Worm's face that we didn't use at all. We went with the one on the furthest left. The other faces look a little more monstrous, a little more demonic. We ended up going with that one. The other thing that's funny about this to me is that it's Worm that I nailed in one pass next to probably the 30th iteration of Cirrus. So it makes it look like they were designed in a similar way, but there were so many passes on Cirrus to get to here. And then he's changed even since then like on the page he looks a little different than that like i was saying earlier it's hard to make a new superhero costume and like it works and then here's the height comparisons which what's roger at a little over five foot i've won maybe i'm a little taller not by much just the fact that eight foot compared to five foot it's hilarious i want my superheroes to look super definitely hit that mark and then this panel i just had to show off just so much detail like there's just so much detail it's really just fantastic i mean even roger down here look at his hand and everything and even this like you forget that this poor lady is here like you forget <laughs> whole things happening there she is i love the amount of detail and time you took into that lady because i was looking at her i'm looking at the panel the action everything happened i'm like this lady is literally just like what the fuck is happening right now <laughs> you know she's on some gases i was pretty nervous on these first five pages because not only were they gonna be the first pages anybody saw but they were the first ones that kenny and ryan were gonna see and i really wanted to show them that i could do it and that i was gonna do a good job and and I think that when Ryan saw this one, I hopefully felt comfortable having me on the book. So it turned out all right. I think I forgot one cover, actually. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's amazing. That's great, man. You got to show that to Ryan. He's going to love that. Oh, that's fantastic. I think we should at least get a variant cover. Maybe (laughs) just one. Oh, I like it. I'll see what Boss thinks. That's pretty great, though. I think you really nailed it. I like that you got the tie up there, too. Did you get some monofilament or fishing wire or something? My wife, she taped ribbon to the shower door. And then, yeah, a little bit of Pixar, not even Photoshop. No stylus. You got to share this with the world sometime soon. I I really like it. That's wonderful. Tell us about your experience publishing with KLC. It's been cool. you know, I agreed to the project, but didn't really know much about how they were going to utilize the platform. So my experience has mostly been getting invited into the community and being on the discords and doing stuff. And I think it's a really fun way to release work because you get early teasers for the people that subscribe, but then also those people get all look at all this sort of back matter, like the character designs and these interviews and stuff. I love that stuff. As a movie guy, I love watching all the director commentaries and the interviews and the making of and all that. And I've always wanted that for comics. And I think it's not really sustainable to do it in every issue. But when you do it through a platform like they do with KLC with Substack, I think that's really cool. So I like it. I'm curious to see where it goes. I think Ryan's got some big plans for the future of it. And that will involve some schlub stuff. So kind of excited to see where it goes. It's been really fun. KLC's been great. Everyone that's a part of it and little podcasts and live streams, all the kind of stuff they do is all really cool. And now every book that they're pushing out has been just 10 out of 10. Vanish is great. I feel great about the schlub. And I need to email them. I just finished reading Kill Your Darlings by Ethan 
Ethan and Griffin, and it's really, really good. KLC is kind of building a good brand here. We are scheduled to talk with them a week from today. I'm really excited to see what their writing is now, just to see the other aspect, because they're so creative with the podcast stuff too. Right, right. All right, another fun question. If you could body swap with any character that you've created, had a part in creating, who would it be? That's actually pretty tricky because there's different things, you know, you get from different characters. There's a character I created in Eris that I think would be really fun to be because he's just evil and sort of opposite of me. There's a character named Rankin. And so part of me wants to be him. Like if I'm doing my, you know, in Mass Effect terms, if I'm doing my Renegade playthrough, I, I would be whatever they call the good playthrough. One of the first characters I ever created was a character named Simon. And he has no mouth. And so he has to find other ways to communicate. And he already feels like a character I live within. So that's sort of my easy answer. And if we're going to do a schlub character, there's a side character that pops up in issue two. And when it comes out, I can tell you more about him. But I would maybe swap with him just because I like his attitude. He's got a can-do attitude, but he doesn't take any shit from anybody. I like it. Any upcoming recent releases you'd like to mention? I just restocked my store with a bunch of my comics. So that's sort of the big thing I have going on other than the schlub. So you can get all my mini comics, Game Over Man, my Aliens fan comic, my Doom comic, IDKFA, my... Dope Smoker comic, Weed Priests, and then I have copies of Beef Bros again, which I hadn't for a long time. So I have Beef Bros back in stock. But really, the thing I'm most excited about is the schlub. I'm all in on the schlub. So I haven't really got anything else going at the moment. I might take a short break to finish the third chapter of Eris, and in which case that would be what I'm most excited about. But right now, schlubbing. Schlubbing is the thing. Perfect. If you want to give one final plug for the schlub release date, all that good stuff one more time. The Schlub comes out on August 23rd. Final order cutoff is July 31st. It is written by Ryan Stegman, Kenny Porter, art by me, colors by Mike Spicer, letters by John J. Hill, and it is an absolute blast. It is a comic for people that have never read comics, and it has all the things that you want if you're a lifelong comic fan. So get your orders in, subscribe to the series, and we have a lot of fun things to show you. That's a clip right there. Perfect. Perfect. One last thing, where can everyone follow you? And more importantly, where can you buy some art? You can find everything about me on my website, TyrellCannon.com. When you go to TyrellCannon.com, uh, you can sign up for my newsletter. My newsletter is something I do fairly regularly, but I'm not going to spam you. But it is the first place I announce original art drops, which will include all the schlub art when I drop that. You get announced there first before it is ever on social media. It's where I announce my commission lists first. So before I ever post them on social media, I announce them there. Just a heads up, they always fill up with newsletter subscribers before it ever gets to social media. And then I also will announce like if I have a, you know, ash cans and, and things like that for sale. So sign up for the newsletter. But if you go there, you can also get links to my social media. But I am at T Cannon Comics on any social media that I'm on. And I'm at T Cannon Comics on Patreon. If you want to sign up for my Patreon, you get access to all my old work. And then you get to see new stuff before it's released to other people as well. Kind of like the KLC Substack. And then on Tuesdays, I've been trying to do live streaming on my YouTube channel, which is also linked via my website, but I do a little drawing hangout session, talk to people, work on something for fun. And then usually those drawings go up for sale as well after I draw them on that night. So check that out too. I feel obligated to buy art of Roger. I just feel like it's necessary. I did a drawing of Roger a few weeks ago, and that is up on the, the website to see. It's a little six by nine drawing of just Roger. Very cool. Well, Tyrell, thank you so much for spending your time with us. Your work is fantastic. We're now super big fans. And the schlub issue one, you knocked it out of the park. Well, thank you guys so much for the kind words and for checking out my stuff. Like I said, I feel like I'm just getting going. And so I want people to jump on board, come along with me. And I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me and ask me some really great questions. It's been a lot of fun. Bother you again one day. Don't you worry. Absolutely. Please do. Panelized Podcast. Panelized Podcast. I went evil and at one point I was covered in peanut butter floating into dimensions. Any dimension that I hopped out of was dead behind me. It was bad. All of my powers, I immediately went evil. And the schlub is a perfect fit for you too.